Hey friends, today we are at Clearwater Marine Aquarium in Clearwater, Florida, where they rescue or find the animals when they're sick, injured, rehabilitate, like fixing them up to make them feel better, and releasing them, letting them go back out into the wild once they're healthy. And today, with the help of our marine animals or our water animals, we are going to learn about our five senses. And do you remember our five senses? Our sense of sight, our sense of smell, our sense of taste, our sense of hearing, and our sense of touch. Are you ready for today's adventure? All right, let's go. The first sense we'll talk about is hearing. Our ears help us hear all the sounds and noises around us. Hello there. Oh, hi. hi. My name is Nurse Dion. Nice to meet you, my name is Evan. Hi, Evan. Who are our friends here? We have Rudolph and Rosie, our resident rough-toothed dolphins. Hi, Rudolph. Hi, Rosie. So today I was teaching our friends that hearing is a very important sense. And we have two ears right on the outside that we can see. Now I notice our friends Rudy and Rosie, they don't have ears that we can visibly see. Do they have ears? Not exactly the same ears that we have, but they absolutely oh. do have ears. Isn't that right, Rudy? He <laughs> said yes. Yes, he does. And they would love to show it off for you. So Rudy and Rosie both have ears right on the side of their head, located about two to three inches behind these tiny little pinholes right here. And wow. you can see it on both of them. So when we hear, we have those little hairs in our ears that lets us feel vibrations, hear vibrations, and it goes to our brains. How does Rosie and Rudy hear? So they don't have hairs inside of their ears, but they utilize their hearing to be able to echolocate. So they are still utilizing those vibrations. Now what happens is they emit different sound waves and that will bounce off of an object. Those sound waves return to them via their lower jaw, which is hollow and it's just filled with a fatty fluid. Now that sound will actually travel up into their inner ear and then to their brain. Their brain will get an image and that is so powerful that they can actually detect the difference between a golf ball and a ping pong ball from an entire American football field away, which is really cool. Now out in the wild, dolphins rely on that capability of hearing to be able to hunt for their fish, to avoid predators, and even navigate their water conditions when the water is murky. This is exactly why Rudolph and Rosie are here with us. They were deemed non-releasable because they lacked the ability to echolocate and they are considered deaf. Now, how do Rudy and Rosie communicate to each other? You will still occasionally hear them vocalizing. Um, Rudy has one of my all-time favorite vocals. <laughs> but these guys communicate through a lot more. So they actually communicate through body posturing towards each other. So they utilize their eyesight to be able to watch what the other animal is doing. They also communicate through tactile or touch. They rub on each other quite a bit. And just like two puppies will play and they can be a little bit mouthy towards each other, <laughs> these guys will bite each other to communicate lots of different things as well. That's all completely natural for them. And I also noticed you were doing gestures with your hands. What is that? So we communicate via hand signals with these guys. Each behavior corresponds to a different behavior, like his head shake yes, or his head shake no. It's like sign language. Absolutely. Oh. Well, Evan, thank you so much for teaching us about how dolphins use their hearing and how important it is. And I love how you guys were able to rescue them and keep them safe. Thank you guys so much for coming on out and learning a little bit more about these guys. Absolutely. Well, Rudy and Rosie, I'll see you later, guys. The next sense we will explore is sight. Our eyes help us see and look at the world around us. Whoa, so cool. Oh, hey there. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good, my name is Nurse Dion. Hey Dion, I'm Scott. Hey Scott. Today, me and my friends, we're learning about our senses and how important our sense of sight is to seeing the world and understanding it. And I notice our friends here, their eyes are uniquely placed. Yeah. These are our African mudskippers, as you pointed out, their eyes are on top of their head. And you can tell a lot about a mudskipper or any type of fish by the placement of their eye. These animals have the ability to be on top of the water as well as inside the water. And their eyes really help them adapt to their environment that way. So they're gonna be looking for things around them. They're gonna be looking up as well, because a lot of things can come from the sky, whether it's insects falling from trees or different prey items there or could it be pre yeah, food, food that we're giving them? Or could it be predators such as birds or anything that may not have the same thing and they're on the menu instead. 
So their eyes really do help them survive when they're out in the wild. Absolutely. So cool. Yeah. Nurse Deanna, if you think that's cool, wait till you see some of the fish I got down here. Wow, look at all these fish here. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Now, Scott, I noticed these fish, their eyes are placed differently than the African mudskipper that we just learned about, which were on top. Now, can you tell me more about these fish? Absolutely. So in our aquarium here, we have a couple different species of fish. We have some trigger fish that are in here. We have some surgeon fish, and we also have an angel fish in here. And if you notice something that's similar with all their eyes is that they're on the side of their heads. Yeah. So what that allows them to do, these types of animals will actually pick within the reef. They'll kind of dig their mouths and faces into crevices and rocks to eat all the prey that they may have. But they'll actually use one side of that eye to kind of look for things. The other side is always aware of their surroundings. It's always looking. And that could be for potential predators. It could be for other prey items that they want to feed on next. It could be to look for other fish, uh, either like-kinded fish or fish that may be trying to steal their lunch. Yeah. All this. And so they're always aware. And you can really tell a lot about a fish by where the eye placement is, as we talked about before. They all have a unique color pattern, I notice. Does that help them hide from predators, say from like maybe a shark? It absolutely can. Depends on the fish and what where they live and their background. It's not only coloration to, to hide from things. Okay. It could be to attract things like other fish, but sharks is one of them that these reef fish are definitely gonna need to be aware of. But that's why they have those eyes on the other side. But sharks are really known for their smell. Their sense of smell. Yes. So do you have a shark here that I we can do. see? We do, we do. We actually have a nurse shark if you'd like to check her out. A nurse shark? Yes. I'm gonna go meet the nurse shark. Awesome. All right. Sounds great. Scott, Thanks, thank you so much. I'll yeah. see you later. Take care. Now we will talk about our sense of smell. Our nose helps us smell different scents, odors, and fragrances. Hey there. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. What's your name? My name is Nurse Dion. Nice to meet you, I'm Emma. Hi, Emma. I'm Chrissy. Hi, Chrissy. So nice to meet you guys. What experience do you have here? Yeah, so today we are going to do our Nurse Shark program. You're a nurse too, right? This is gonna be great. Perfect. Nurse Shark, <laughs> Nurse Dion, let's do it. Awesome, so our Nurse Shark's name is Thelma. Basically how this will work is we will be on this far side of the raft. My friend Chrissy here is going to be in the water working with our friend Thelma. And we have two rules for you for this program. So we want to make sure not to stand up on the raft and go surfing. So we'll stay seated. No surfing, check. Awesome. And we don't want to put our hands in the water either. Copy, no hands in the water. Awesome. So we'll be talking to you throughout the whole program, let you know what's going on, teach you a little bit about Thelma. So All right. here's your food. We can go ahead and get started. To get on the raft, we'll sit on this blue part on our bottoms and then kind of just crawl on over. I can do that. Let's do it. <sighs> All right. So with our nurse shark Thelma, our start of session cue or the way we tell her that we are going to start our session and offer her food is by moving the raft. So just like Chrissy's doing, if you can untie that rope there, we're simply going to move to the first boat cleat, go for a little boat ride. Today, me and my friends were learning about our senses and we were talking about our sense of smell and how important it is. We have our noses, which are on the front of our face, mm -hmm. and we have olfactory cells that are like little hairs that are in our noses, and it'll send messages to our brains that allows us to understand our sense of smell. Now, looking at Thelma, our nurse shark here, I noticed she doesn't have like a visible nose like we do. Right. Does she have a nose? Can she smell? Yeah, so sharks are actually known for their sense of smell. Okay. That's one of the main things that they use to detect the world around them, which is really awesome. And if you think about animals in the ocean, if they had something like external ears or a nose, that's kind of something that predators can easily grab onto. Yes. So they are built in a way that those things are hidden. So with our nurse shark, Thelma and all sharks are actually going to have kind of four noses. <laughs> so they have two nares or nostrils on each side. So they're going to take that scent in with one of them and expel it out through the other, which is really awesome. All right, so she's nice and high up in the water. We have a piece of capelin ready. So I'll show you how to feed and then we'll have you feed the next piece. Absolutely. So here she comes. She knows we're here, we're ready to go. I'm just gonna drop it right in front of her and she's gonna suck it on in. So that was a piece of capelin. Now Chrissy's gonna go ahead and get in the water. 
So what we're doing here is called a voluntary hold. We ask Thelma to be nice and comfortable with us because this is where we would do all of our medical procedures. So every time we're setting this up and offering her food, it would be just like a vet visit. And you can see she's nice and comfortable. If she wanted to swim out of Chrissy's arms, that would be totally fine. Chrissy is simply supporting her. She's not holding on to her. So to tell Thelma she's doing a good job, we're gonna go ahead and offer her a piece of food. So I'm gonna give that to you. That's called a capelin. Hold your hand out here very close to her mouth. And Chrissy, are you ready? Ready. Go ahead and drop that. Oh, nice really cool. So what you hear there are those buccal muscles. So nurse sharks, they spend most of their time at the bottom of the ocean floor resting. You can picture where their mouth is on the underside of their body. So they suck food in. That's what we heard, those buccal muscles. So when she pops her head above the water, we hear that powerful suction. And if you'd like to touch Miss Thelma when she's still here, you can take your hand in anywhere from here back. Go ahead and feel her both directions. It's like so, soft, but also has like texture to it. Kind yeah, of like sand. Exactly, yeah. So her body, and we're gonna give her a piece of food to tell her thank you for being nice and calm for thank that. Thank you, Thelma. <laughs> go ahead. Whoops, that's all right. She wants to go Perfect. get it. So her body is covered in something known as dermal denticles, and that is basically body armor. It helps protect their skin. So you can imagine if you or I go into this habitat here and swim around, if we rub up against the rocks, we're gonna get cut and scraped. But with Thelma, she's completely covered, so she's all good. All right, let's see you. Try this piece. Let's make this our last piece. Last piece, ready, Thelma? <laughs> Perfect, so we're gonna go ahead and end that hold. Chris is gonna get out of the water and we're going to move our raft back and that lets Thelma know that we are done. We're not asking her to do anything else. She did a great job and the session's over. Oh, well, Emma, Pretty cool, huh? Chrissy, thank you so much. <laughs> I had such course. a great time today. Our sense of touch. When we touch something, our skin sends information to our brain to tell us more about it. Our sense of touch can tell us about the things we feel like temperature, texture, if it feels painful, or if it feels nice. Oh, cool. Oh, hey, hey, hey there, Emma. What are <laughs> you doing here? Lucian. I'm hanging out with the Singers here at Singery Beach. We have seven cow nose rays. Whoa, this is a cool exhibit. Yeah, so here we offer our guests to touch our Singery. So if you'd like to touch them too, once they swim by, you can touch them on the wing. I would love to. Now, earlier we were talking about our sense of smell with our friend Thelma. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my friends here that we're gonna learn all about our senses. And since stingrays have a unique sense of touch, it's a great time to talk about sense of touch. Now, touch is a very important sense because it helps us understand the world around us. And we do that through these roads that we call nerves. And then when we have the nerves that are triggered, it is processed through our brain. And that's how we understand touch when we understand things like cold, or when something's hot, or even when something is ah, painful. And I heard that stingrays have a unique sense of touch. Can you share more about that? Of us? course, I'd love to. So with our stingrays, they have something really cool called the ampullae of Lorenzini, uh -huh. which is basically on the underside of their body and it's tiny little pores filled with gel that allow them to detect the world around them in a way that we cannot. So they'll feel different electrical currents from other animals. Say if there was an animal hanging out in the sand here, they would be able to feel that and go over to that usually a little invertebrate type animal move the sand away with something called lobes that are under their body, and then they would be able to get that snack based on their sense of touch. So their sense of touch comes from these pores, you're saying, and then these pores are kind of like our nerves. Exactly. So they're able to touch things and move things and feel where food is at, for example, like what we have here in this bucket, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, would you like to feed one of them? I would love to. <laughs> So basically their mouth is on the underside of their body. You're gonna okay. hold this fish, it's called a capelin, kind of like an ice cream cone. All right. Put over your hand and then you just let go. It doesn't smell like an ice cream cone, <laughs> but I'm sure it's Doesn't very delicious. Like All right guys, you ready? Yeah, go ahead and put your hand nice and deep. Yep, who's hungry? <laughs> Not him, I guess. Some of so, these guys too, we know who all of them oh. are so that we can keep track of their diet. So this is Rowdy. He doesn't look hungry. He's coming oh, he's back. coming back. So move your hand on your awesome let go. Boom. Oh, and his yeah. skin, it's like very slimy like. Oh, they're getting really excited. <laughs> what is their skin made out of? So their skin is made out of denticles, which is just what we talked about with Thelma. 
are nerve sure. sharks. So very similar, but they also have a mucous membrane that covers their body. So it's similar but different than Thelma and sharks in general. And that mucus helps protect their skin, allows them to glide through the water. And just like you saw, they can splash and swim pretty fast if they want to. <laughs> I see that. So their skin really helps them swim fast to avoid predators and to, as well as making sure they eat well. Exactly. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, so now that we've fed our stingrays, would you be interested in going to feed our tortoises? I would love to. Let's do it. Does that sound like a plan, guys? Let's go. <laughs> the last sense we'll talk about is taste. When we eat, our sense of taste can tell us about the flavors of the food. Our tongue will tell us if the food tastes sweet, salty, sour, bitter, or savory. All right, Narcian, we're gonna come visit our red-footed tortoises here. First, we're going to step in this foot bath. I could do that. Perfect, that has something called rescue. It cleans our feet, so we're not bringing anything bad into their habitat. And then All you can right. come and sit on this stool here. Oh, awesome. hi guys. So we have three friends. So we're gonna offer them food if you'd like. So this tortoise right here, her name is Littlefoot. So she's gonna start munching, but please feel free if you want to touch them. They can feel everything on that shell, also known as a carapace. So you can touch the shell and you can kind of help her eat too. So I just pick it up with the tongs. Yep, pick it up with the tongs and make sure she doesn't bite the tongs. So no, you'll see on our tray here, we have a variety of food. So we're gonna have some greens as well as some fruits and some vegetables. So today we have Swiss chard and then red romaine. And then I see some zucchini and sweet potato and cantaloupe and then some melon too. Now, do turtles have taste buds? Yeah, so it's kind of hard to know for sure exactly mm. how they are tasting, but we do know with our animals here in particular, they seem to prefer different food items. So a lot of times they'll go for the fruit, whether it be like strawberry or melon, they always seem to prefer something that is sweet out in the natural environment, they'll be foraging kind of on the same thing. So basically anything they can find, fruits, veggies, um, grasses, they eat a lot of grass, so like little lawn mowers. Would you be interested in maybe going on a boat tour, maybe even seeing a sea turtle or a dolphin out in the natural environment? I would love to. Hey, let's go on a boat ride. Awesome. Oh, it's the dolphin watch. Let's go. Hi guys. Ah. It's so great to be on the water. Look, a pelican. Hi, pelican. Ooh, there's an osprey. Both pelicans and ospreys have great vision to help them see fish from the sky. Oh, look, we spotted our first dolphin. Did you know a family of dolphins is known as a pod? Dolphins use their sense of hearing and sense of touch to safely swim through the water. And we're back to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Wow, what a great day today, friends. We visited Clearwater Marine Aquarium where they rescue or find the animals when they're sick or injured, rehabilitate them, like fix them and make them feel healthy, and then release them or let them go back into their habitat once they are feeling good and healthy. We also learned about our senses, like our sense of sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch, and how marine animals use their senses to help keep them alive and surviving. Well, that's it for today's video. If you'd like to continue our health adventure, just search for more Nurse Dion videos. And until next time, I'll see you soon, friends.